Good evening. Welcome to the State of Business on our television with me, Kavish Kapurera. Let's take a look at today's headlines. President briefs diplomatic community regarding current situation of the country. Suicide mobile app launched. News in detail. President Maithri Pala Sirisena briefed the diplomatic community at the Presidential Secretariat yesterday about the progress of the operations carried out by the security forces to curb terrorist activities and the steps taken by the government to bring back normalcy in the country. Addressing ambassadors and high commissioners based in Sri Lanka are resident representatives of the United Nations and affiliated organizations and heads of other international agencies. President Sirisena said that 95% of terrorist suspects have been currently apprehended or accounted for, and only two or three suspects remain to be taken into custody. Referring to the clashes took place between two groups of people in Nigambo, he said social media was blocked for a day because of some attempts made by some interested parties to instigate communal clashes, but the ban was lifted after a short while. He thanked the foreign leaders and their representatives for sharing Sri Lanka's sorrow and grief in these trying times. The envoys of foreign countries and representatives of international agencies were unanimous in their expression of complete support for President Sirisena in his endeavor to eradicate terrorism from Sri Lanka. Minister of Foreign Affairs Dilak Marapana, Secretary to the President Udayar Seneviratna and Additional Secretary Asala Virakon, commanders of security forces were also present on this occasion. The 1990 Suosari Ambulance Service today launched its new emergency dispatch management system and the unique 1990 mobile app to enable faster dispatching and management of ambulance movements. The 1990 app, which is available for both Android and iOS phones, will enable persons with smartphones to call the service faster and easily by just a touch of one button. This mobile app will also capture the location of the caller more accurately, enabling the ambulance to reach the patient faster. All this is being initiated to provide the most reliable and efficient free ambulance service to Sri Lankans even in the furthest parts of the country. Reducing the response time through the new EDM system and the 1990 app will specifically help patients suffering cardiac arrests and strokes. Currently, the average response time for 1990 ambulance service is 8 minutes and 23 seconds in the western province, 11 minutes and 25 seconds in the rest of the country, which is comparable or better than most developed countries. Currently, 258 ambulances cover 8 provinces in the country and will have national coverage with the launch of the eastern province later this month, which will increase the number of ambulances to 300. The National Vesak Festival, originally planned to be held over a period of five days, has been limited to a period of two days this year. The chief prelates of the four factions had jointly requested the government to hold the National Vesak Festival in a simple manner, with more religious activities such as Dhamma sermon, sil and meditation programs. Accordingly, the National Vesak Festival will be held on the 17th and 18th of May. The public is requested to hoist Buddhist flags at their homes on the two days. These measures were taken after taking into consideration the prevailing situation in the country following the Easter Day attacks. Speaking at a press briefing held recently, Chairman of the Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority and the Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau, Krishu Gomez, outlined the short-term plans that have been put in place to reinvigorate the tourism industry. So in terms of our, our key uh, focus areas uh, from now on in uh, order to be able to revive the Sri Lanka tourism brand, uh, which we're very, very confident of. These are some of the priority areas uh, we will either be taking the lead uh, uh, on or working with other uh, relevant organizations. Number one is national security. So we need to be able to go out and say country is uh, uh, back on track and safety is uh, assured. So we're working on that. Then apart from that, uh, as Sri Lanka tourism, security in respect of uh, hotels and, and other destinations, uh, the tourists are patronizing. It's our obligation, our accountability to ensure that these places are secured. Uh, so we're working on that as well, together with uh, the military and, and uh, Sri Lanka police. Kishu Gomez also expressed the following on the short to medium term plans of Sri Lanka tourism. Short to medium term, uh, we will be working with a PR company. We are going through the approval process. It will be a global PR company that has experience in handling uh, similar situations in other countries. We have looked at uh, the, the proposal already. The people who will be working on uh, the Sri Lanka uh, issue uh, are people with the uh, right background, right experience, right instinct, right wisdom, right dimensions right attitude, all of that. So we're confident that as we 
secure the approval uh, from the relevant authorities. We will be able to uh, work on uh, uh, an integrated uh, peer campaign in order to manage the sentiments, uh, change sentiments from negative to neutral to positive. And as we create that uh, positive sentiments, we will then be working with uh, a global advertising agency in the short term in order to start promoting the tourism uh, products and services we're being marketing. Sri Lanka Tourism has decided to go ahead with several global events that have been planned in Sri Lanka this year. Chairman of the SLTDA and SLTPB, Kishu Gomez, had this to say in this regard. So in terms of some of the other uh, events uh, we will be going ahead with, uh, we have five events happening from now to uh, end of the year. These are global events uh, that have been organized uh, and, and uh, we've given the commitment to. We have an amateur golf tournament happening. We have a surfing event happening. We have an Asian baseball uh, tournament that's happening for which uh, about 600 players uh, will come. And uh, we will also have CITES, uh, the one uh, we were to have in May. We will now have that in uh, September, given the circumstances, uh, which will attract about 3,000 plus delegates, officials, and, and others. Keep tuning in for more news after this short commercial break. Welcome back. Sri Lanka Ministry of Health has declared the week from today to May 14th as a National Dengue Prevention Week to launch island-wide cleaning campaigns for mosquito eradication. However, due to the current situation in the country, the mosquito control operations will be conducted only on three days from today. Accordingly, dengue eradication programs will be carried out on the 8th, 9th and 10th of this month, covering 75 MOH divisions in 18 districts. With the southwest monsoons in effect, there is a great risk of dengue mosquitoes breeding. About 16,000 dengue cases have been identified during the first four months of this year, out of which 23 patients succumbed to the disease. A high-level Sri Lankan ministerial delegation headed by Minister of Development Strategies and International Trade Malik Samar Vikrama undertook an official visit to Oman together with a team of officials from the statutory agencies coming under the purview of the respective ministries for meetings with the Omani counterparts on May 5th and 6th. The team also included Minister of Highways and Road Development and Petroleum Resources Development Kabir Hashim and Minister of Industry and Commerce Resettlement of Protracted Displaced Persons, Cooperative Development and Vocational Training and Skills Development Richard Badiuddin. The visit was a follow-up to the Dr. Mohammed Al Rumi, Minister of Oil and Gas of Oman, with three ministers in Sri Lanka in March 2019, during the former's visit to Sri Lanka as a guest of honour at the foundation stone laying ceremony of the Greenfield Oil Refinery in Hambantota, on the invitation of Minister of Industry and Commerce. The meeting with Dr. Mohammed Rumi focused on exploring avenues for cooperation in the field of petroleum industry between Sri Lanka and Oman, and sharing the experience of Oman in setting up oil refinery projects in Oman and abroad. At the meeting with the Mulham Al Jaf, Chief Investment Officer of the State General Reserve Fund, which is a sovereign wealth fund as well as the main investment arm of the Sultanate, the Sri Lankan side briefed on the investment opportunities in the areas of port development, fisheries, agriculture, hospitality industry and development of highways. In an exclusive interview with Art Television on BizTalk, director of the MJF Group Malik J. Fernando expressed the following with regard to the impact of cancellations suffered by the tourism industry following the terror attacks. So the impact is of cancellations running from say a 60% or 50% occupancy down to about a 10%. So it is pretty devastating. However, the bigger fear is the pickup for new bookings for the summer and the next peak. That is something that we need to get our act together to quickly rebuild confidence. Because if this is a long drawn out recovery, which could take a year or more, then obviously it would be far more devastating to the industry than having cancellations during a typical uh, low occupancy period. Malik Fernando also expressed the following on the travel bans that were imposed on Sri Lanka as a result of which took place on April 21st. Lots of travellers and lots of travel agents have fallen in love with Sri Lanka. It's not like before where many hadn't come at all, so they needed to be convinced. Here, 
all the travel trade have been, they love the country, so they're very, very supportive. However, in order for them to be able to successfully sell the country, the travel advisories need to be lifted. Now, I'm firmly of the view that some of those advisories were brought in due to bungling of the post-attack management of the situation. However, after it happened, if there had been a more effective response, I am convinced that some of the advisories would have been softer than the levels to which they were escalated. Fernando also made the following statement on why it is critical to work on getting countries to revise or remove travel advisories. In terms of getting these advisories revised, which is critical because in some countries, UK and Australia for one, some continental countries, travel insurance doesn't apply. So a lot of people would take out travel insurance, medical insurance as well. So if something were to happen, it's very categorical, insurance doesn't apply. So that puts people off, particularly to operators and so on would not want to take the risk. Independent travelers, some may take the risk, but in the light of these advisories, many would not. So that's why we're having cancellations. The cancellations have largely been for May and June. Uh, there have been some for July, and there are there's the odd one for even uh, you know November, December, January, the next peak season, because people really don't know. Stay tuned for stock updates after this short commercial break. Welcome back. Trading at the Colombo Stock Exchange ended on a negative note today. The oil share price index dropped 9.57 points to close at 5,372.97. And the SMPSL20 dropped 13.15 points to close at 2,552.16. The turnover was 222.2 million rupees and 7.9 million shares were traded. Up next is Forex rates. Well, that's a wrap of the bulletin for the day. Signing off with the promise for tomorrow at the same time with nothing but the latest. Thank you and good night.